This video was brought to you by The Daily Briefing. Putting aside your opinion on the matter and the sticky issue of the Northern Ireland Protocol, it's fair to say that the technical aspects of Brexit, actually leaving the European Union, are done, right? On Christmas Eve 2020, Downing Street proudly announced that a deal on the UK's future relationship with the EU had been agreed, and that the UK had taken back control. There was, and is, a slightly overlooked bit here though, and to find it, you need to turn to the very end of the text agreed on Christmas Eve, specifically Article 774. This agreement shall neither apply to Gibraltar nor have any effect in that territory. Ah. Anyways, it's been over two years since then. Surely an agreement has been reached by now. Well, not quite. Before diving into what agreement have or have not been reached regarding Gibraltar, it's worth highlighting just why it's a perilous position, all things Brexit concerned. The thing to note is that Gibraltar isn't technically a part of the United Kingdom. Constitutionally speaking, it's known as a British Overseas Territory, a status also held by the likes of Bermuda, the Cayman Islands and the Falklands. Unlike all the other overseas territories, however, Gibraltar was included in the European Union as the only territory physically connected to the European mainland. And it's that point that has caused the most headaches recently. Gibraltar physically shares a land border with the European Union, in the form of its border with Spain. For much of its recent history, that's not been a problem. In fact, it's been pivotal to Gibraltar's economy. When the UK and Gibraltar were part of the European Union, that land border was effectively completely open. Brits residing in Gibraltar could walk across the border into Spain to work, shop and relax, and vice versa. Prior to the pandemic, on average, more than 28,000 people crossed the border each and every day. The vote to leave the European Union, however, ended free movement, suddenly risking Gibraltar's position. Without a deal on the future of Gibraltar, the territory would revert to a hard Brexit position, with the border becoming part of the EU's external border. That is to say, there were major concerns that, overnight, Brits would be unable to go to work across the border and vice versa. So both sides scrambled to try and get an agreement in place before the Brexit transition period, which did cover Gibraltar, ended on the 31st of December. The problem being that negotiations had to toe a very, very fine line. As The Guardian put it at the time, negotiations had to simultaneously be focused on preserving free movement for the thousands who regularly crossed the narrow border, while steering clear of the centuries-old sovereignty dispute between London and Madrid. Eventually, just hours before the end of the transition period, the UK and Spain reached an agreement in principle. The agreement in principle would see a hard border avoided by bringing Gibraltar into the Schengen area, that is, the area on mainland Europe where internal border controls have been abolished, and people can travel freely from one nation to another with minimal, if any, checks. By joining Schengen, residents of Gibraltar could freely travel into Spain and vice versa, though British citizens arriving from the UK would be subject to passport controls. In order to actually make this happen, Spain, a signatory of the Schengen Agreement, would act as a guarantor or sponsor of Gibraltar. At the time, Spain's foreign minister estimated it would take around six months to transform that agreement in principle into an actual treaty and get it signed by both sides. Nearly two years later, both sides are still negotiating. In fact, it took until October 2021 for the EU to agree to a mandate, and since then there have been 11 rounds of negotiation, all without a firm final agreement. This lack of agreement has already begun to have substantive negative impacts on the residents of Gibraltar. Following the UK and Gibraltar's departure from the EU, reciprocal healthcare arrangements came to an end. While a member, British citizens had the same rights to healthcare in EU countries as the people from said countries. So if a Brit, for instance, went to Spain on a holiday and fell ill, they would have been entitled to emergency healthcare on the same terms as Spanish citizens. If treatment was free for Spanish citizens, it would be free for Brits too. This continued for all Brits until the end of the transition period, i.e. the 31st of December 2020. 
For those residing in Gibraltar, Spain temporarily extended arrangements until the 30th of June 2022. Towards the end of June 2022, the Spanish government decided, however, not to extend it any further. All in all, meaning that Gibraltar residents lost reciprocal cover. In substantive terms, that means that Gibraltar residents no longer automatically had access to free emergency health care in Spain during the temporary stay in the country, by virtue of cover back in Gibraltar. In fact, Gibraltar's government explicitly warned that, from the 1st of July 2022, residents of Gibraltar should ensure that they have appropriate travel insurance with medical cover each time they go to Spain, irrespective of the duration, including the examples of going on a shopping trip to the country or even as short a stay as a meal. More recently, it doesn't appear that negotiations have moved forward much. Talking to Europa Press, Spain's current foreign minister stressed that Spain doesn't want a no-deal scenario, but that the government of Spain and the EU are ready for any scenario. The main sticking point? Well, passport control. Specifically, who should be responsible for carrying out passport checks? Spain has demanded that it ought to be the Spanish police, given it's Spain that is sponsoring Gibraltar into Schengen. The UK, however, sees this as somewhat of a red line, at risk of incurring into the debate over Gibraltar's sovereignty. Instead, they want Frontex, the EU's border agency, which we've covered in a number of videos now. A further spanner in the works could arise in the form of Spain's general election this year. Current polling points towards a coalition between the Popular Party and Vox, garnering an absolute majority. Vox is deemed to be a populist radical right party, with some further branding them as plain far right. The party is, crucially for us, doggedly nationalist, having advocated for returning Gibraltar to Spain. In fact, the relationship between Vox and Gibraltar reached a head when, in December 2019, Gibraltar's government ended up filing a criminal complaint with Spanish prosecutors against Vox, arguing that statements by the party created an atmosphere of hatred among Spaniards towards Gibraltarians. If then Vox does get into power, it could lead to, in Politico's words, a cataclysmic change in negotiations, if they have not been concluded by that point. Talk about a ticking clock. If you want to be updated on this story as it plays out, then you ought to subscribe to the TLDR Daily Briefing. If you want to keep yourself updated on some of the most important problems facing the UK, and indeed the world, then you can do this by watching our show, The Daily Briefing, where we break down the day's biggest stories each and every day. You can find it linked below, or if you'd prefer, by searching TLDR News Daily on YouTube.